Hello everyone and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So today we're going to do twist and fix. That's got you thrown, hasn't it? A bit of a puzzle. So a few things to do first of all before we get into the twist and fix. Those guys that came up to us at Makers Central in Birmingham the weekend we've just gone, fantastic. It was so great to meet you all and such nice comments. It makes me realise there are actually people that are, are watching maybe what we do. I'm just looking at a camera. I don't actually see faces. So it's nice to see those people and actually get a bit of response from them. All right. So me and Ben were really overwhelmed by some fantastic comments and meeting some of you. So thank you all very much. All right. So I'll twist and fix thing. What is it? We've seen some of this a little bit when we did some stuff with the Ultimate Edge. So I'm just going to grab a cute few components. All right. Twist and fix is a wood turning accessory. It's a bad way of phrasing it, um, but it will allow you to adapt your lathe a little bit. We can do a number of things. Some of the things you will have already seen and we've done in different ways, but actually by doing what we're going to do now, it makes my lathe a bit more versatile. Um, Colwyn gave me, I don't know if it was a credit the other week, he called me MacGyver on a video. Well, that's fantastic, but that kind of scenario, you've got problems with the sound, mate? Let me just, all right, just check in where I am on my back, all right? I'm on, I've got green light, everything. We're just checking the guys are looking over here at the screen and playing around with. Um, I'm just going to keep talking so see if Colwyn can figure out what's going on a little bit, all right? We've got Colwyn doing the, the computers. Fiona's in as well, having a look with us. So nice we've got these two in. Sound any better? How are we doing? Might as well get that bit sorted out before we try and explain too much. I'm not too noisy on the screen, just hitting the, just under the red, which is good. All right, good. You reckon okay? So uh, if you I'd just like to know what you're getting the sound quality guys back home, if we've got anything, let us know. We'll see what we can do. All right. Okay. So a twist and fix. We've looked at a little bit in the fifth four with the ultimate edge. And um, as I kind of said, I'm one of those that will come up with ideas and kind of could be adapted for something else. And this is the prime example, something where we could take twist and fix, put it on a wood lathe, make my lathe more adaptable. It allows me to do a few more things. What does that mean? I don't have a big, massive workshop. I don't live in America. I'm envious, okay? So some of you guys in the States have seen these huge workshops, but don't have that here. Um, so twist and fix. First of all, what it is, we get something like a hub. So this will fit directly onto the lathe. These are direct threaded, all right? So this is 33 by 3.5. We do four threads at the moment, I think. Inch eight, inch and a quarter, 33. And we do this one, which... Is for those Vic Mark fans who have the collar. So this will bolt on. So if you've got a Vic Mark or something with an ASR ring, which we'll be doing on here at some point soon, it will allow you to put it on, fix it in place. Okay. So that's our hub bit. This goes on. Just going to show you a little bit more on this. We have a spring in here. If I can move it, oh, little bar comes across. All right. We've got lock screws on the body here. All right. Now, part of the reason for doing this direct thread and not fitting into a chuck, better access here. So I haven't got that big, massive chuck body getting in the way, so that's better. I can look it on, on the spindle. Let's do that a second, because this is probably going to stay on here now. So just the grub screw and the Allen key, just put that on. These guys are still playing with the computer over here, so I'm just looking at, okay, Colin's giving me the thumb, I like, that's good, all right? I'm just worried that it sounds a bit, and we're just playing around with, okay. So first bit's on, we've got the spring-loaded bit. This bit is the important bit in ways, and you can buy as many of these as you like. This unscrews, I'm just taking it apart. A lot of screw thread on there. These are in stainless steel, that comes off. So there is three components for this. This bit actually will go onto that spring-loaded bit, push over, clip round. All right, so that clips on and off and locks in place. Now, one of the things when we first looked at I was shocked on how accurate this will run as an object when it's on the lathe, how true it will become, which is fantastic. So let's just for a second, because it will make it easier for me, put it on there. I want to set it up for what we're going to use it for a bit later. So I've got, and I'm going to put two on here. Saves me time, so I can just screw those on. I can use the lathe momentum to help pull it up that thread. I can put the collar plate on the end. Then we have a lock nut, okay? Now that screws on. And again, I can cheat by using the lathe. I've got the burr in here. I can turn that round to tighten it. In the end of here, 
I can get to a grip screw now. Uh, it's on there. Let's just tighten that one up. That pinches down on the surface here. So it's a tiny little grub screw. Pull that. That pushes that plate over, locks it in. So that's quite nice. So that's beautiful. I can put that on and off. Okay. So let's just take that off because I don't want that one. Okay, Cohen, what have you got? So, Jason, what's the advantage of this system over the Morse taper pigtails? You're going to see. We're going to show you that exactly this afternoon in reality. Okay. Um, the most type of picture that we use, me and Cole would have sat here, I'll tell you, 23 years ago, that was our stupid idea. All right, so we came up with that picture. I'm really proud of it. We sold it for a long time. This is going to give you a few more things, but let's do the let's do the wood polish thing first then, okay? So let's just go, I think we can probably go, maybe camera two, Fiona's got another one, uh-oh. Next question is, why are the grub fixing screws needed? Is it because of the releasing of the bayonet lock? On the, the screws on the side of the chuck body? Ah, mm -hmm. oh, the ASR one. Sorry, what are we looking on at? The, um, so where you used on the end of the, the locking. Okay, I know the one yeah. you're on about. You're on about the one in the end. Here. That's it. Okay. So the screw that's in the end here, the little grub screw, has a... I'm just trying to see if we can see it on the camera. Uh, camera three, let the overhead will be better. Look. All right. Can you see that slot near it? So this grub screw comes through from there, pushes on the side of that plate, pushes it off at a very slight angle. So actually it near means this one I do. That's going to become a little bit important later on. So that little side grub screw forces on the side, wedges it over a little bit. So that actually locks it in. Okay, so quite an important little one for what we're going to use it for a bit later. Okay, I understand where you're heading now. Okay, so we've got the ones on there, we've got the air ring, right. Most of the guys probably go back to camera one, I think, a minute, Fiona. Let's just have a quick look. Fiona's in training for us because, obviously, we're getting too busy. I mean, Cole is going somewhere. I've got to go to the AEW in a few weeks' time. So we're never going to be here. No, we've got to be here. Um, right. Now, you've said about the most type of polishing thing. Now, we get lots of guys who... I get emails regularly this, and we explain it. What we're going to do, first of all, we're going to polish a light and a dark bit of wood. Sorry. Okay? So a light and a dark. All right? Bit of ash and a bit of a binger. All I've done with these is sand them to 400 grit. I expect the owner, if we have a quick look, you can see. Okay, so they are sanded, nothing special, right? Not shiny. I want to make them shiny. One of the things I love about with certain things I get is how'd you get that polish? This is little laburnum box we've done for the blog, which is for a box we're going to make in just over a month's time, okay, 20th of June, I think this is, so I buffed this and polished it, that'll give you an idea of what I want as a shine, so first thing we're going to do with our bit of ash and our bit of a binger, we're going to put some cellulose sand and sealer on it, okay, we dilute this a bit with some cellulose finish, for the guys that live in the States, and I get those those questions is this wipe on poly no it's not if you want some cellulose sand and sealer and you live in the states i've done a bit of research for you this morning craft supplies usa sell mylands which is made in the uk cellulose sand and sealer okay so all i've got now is our brush out the jar i'm gonna brush it on okay we could do this on the lay but i'm trying not to take all those bits back off from there wipe it off so let that get into there a little bit the babinga. Again, something dark. We can brush on a coat. I can be as liberal as I like. Um, a good friend of mine and Colwyn's from years ago used to describe this as slop it on, wipe it off. Now, wipe that all off of there. I can't get rid of the excess. So that's the cellulose sailor. Now, the idea of this is a, a polish. It gives me something hard wearing. So let's do dark wood. So we've got our mop. The joy of this, actually, one thing is quick change. Okay. Just going to drop my speed down a little bit, put it on. Let's see what we get. Now, I can get up to about 1800 RPM with this. This is a stitched polishing mop. You can see it nicely on the edge here. You've got the stitching. I've got a six inch. You can go four inch. All right. Now, the other joy with this, I've got lots of movement area around here. I'm going to bring my speed up 13. I want to be up to about 1600. So now up to 1863. There you go. Good year. We're going to move it round. Right. I can work parallel. So first stage quite quick. Other thing I'm renowned for. These little things. So a ball. 
All right. Again, lots of work error on this. So these are done exactly the same, the sailor. Okay, so we've done a dark one. How about do a light one? So we just unclip it, stitch them up, compound. Now we haven't looked at compound, I better do a little bit. Polishing compounds are really confusing. Um, why? Because people think they're something special. Polishing compounds are made in a range of, and I'm just stretching behind me to get a whole range of different things. White one or buff, red one, blue one, pink one. Are they the same? No, funny enough, they're different, but they do different things. So this is actually designed for veneers and plastics. The blue is for ferrous metal. The red, I can't remember off the top of the head. My pink, I think it's for aluminium or aluminum, okay? So the compounds, if you start looking into it, they are color-coded for what they are designed to be polishing. All right, that's quite an important part. So most places if you buy crack color, it will do what you want. I think there's a few unscrupulous companies out there that are giving them flash names, make you think there's something different. No, they are a polishing compound. They are color-coded for what we're working on. We can use a tiny little bit, and we don't need much. On that bit. All right, so we're just working on that bit of ash coming down. I'm just going to grab a pale ball. I want to give you the relevance maybe of something we're working on. I've got to hold on to it. I can have this at the moment. It is spinning towards me as you'd normally use for your life. Now, the other nice thing with the setup with this, especially in the modern lathes where you have a variable speed, we can control the speed better. We can, therefore, reduce things like heat buildup, accommodate mops. We can even run it in reverse. So at the moment, we've done the light and the dark. I want to go Carnuba, our polish. So third mop, quick twist, it's on. Quick and easy. This is a loose mop, so unstitched, and some carnauba wax. A little bit on there. Gently work round. Okay. I can work different directions, so this is easy to do. Right. So we said we do the timber bit first. Most of you have a wood lathe, you're going to polish wood on it. Okay. Let's do the two we did, so we got... Now, okay. Now, the joy of this is a polish. It is very hard wearing, all right? So it holds that shine for a long time. It's hard wearing and instant, okay? So I haven't got to wait for anything to dry. It's quick and easy to work with. Now let's just grab those together, look, our bits. All right. Nice polish, beautiful shine. Doesn't change the color of the wood too much. So quite quick and simple. Fantastic for, if you like, smaller stuff. You're not going to polish a fruit bowl on this easily. Boxes, vases, wooden fruit. You've seen us use it for a whole range of different things. Okay, so great way of polishing. So, oh, bit there, let's take that off. So the major thing with this is how quick I can change that over, ready to go. Now, we've just done a bit of wood. Some of you might do plastics, epoxies, All right? Some of you, let's have a look. Which one should we do first? I'm gonna want the white there. We're just gonna do that, I think. So let's bring that over. I'm gonna put that mop on that we tightened up earlier. All right, before I start the lathe, Fiona's got a hand up again, so let's go to Fiona. Yeah, so what are the advantages of this buffing system compared to the Charnwood one? Compared to? Charnwood. Oh, Charnwood. What's, what's, um, I don't know what Charnwood one will do. Um, Turry from Chestnut Products, we know does a tree, does a bar, this thing, one piece, okay? Yeah, three mops in one go. The major thing about having something maybe as we've got quick and easy and interchangeable, I've got more access around this. All right, this is a system at the moment you've seen me do one medium wood. Okay, let's do a little bit of this then on plastic. So we're going for it, all right? Fine. Uh oh. Yeah, before we continue, Jim's got an art question for you. He's got the same lathe as you, 
and he's wondering what the threaded holes on the back hollow side of the tailstock are. Tailstock down here? Come on, Carl, going to come and point Sorry, out here. Um, he's, he's gonna... I'm not answering, sure. There. Oh, my God. Right. Now we know we're heading right. Okay. We're, we're deviating off a little bit now, <laughs> aren't we? Look. Okay. This one. Um, in the end, you know, it goes in between the bird. Is this thing. Okay. Which is the nut. Okay. All right. Have a look on Frey, Cohen. Look. All right. So that's the nut that stops you pulling the tail stock off the end of the leg. To give you somewhere so you keep it safe, you can screw it into that hole. So when you take it off the bed, just screw it into there, then you lift your tail stuck up, and then you know where it is. You haven't dropped it in the shavings and thrown it out the door when you shovel up, okay? That's the only thing we can figure out is useful, all right? So is that right? I've got the right thing? Sorry, I missed that completely, Jason, sorry. Right, yeah, that yeah, right? yeah, that's okay, fine. Okay, so um, that's, if that's what we're looking at, that nut really just gives you a location hold. So if you move things about, okay, let's do all the plastics a minute. So I have a bit of this. Yeah, no, let's have a look on free because would you reckon of that? That's not bad, is it? Quite clean, isn't it? Yeah, not bad. What happens if we put it on this then? So this is a Webrex wheel, and I'm going to make my life easier because I'm going to run it in reverse. So this will give you the scope of. What's this going to do to this? And I'm hoping you can see the effect I've got on that side. Fantastic. Look at that. Now, we're going to take that wheel up and put it back on. I said plastic. So we can go with the white mop that we've used to polish the wood with. Okay. I'm going to change my direction and go come towards me. So rotation as your laid would be. A little bit of compound. We're using that white mop. Change direction, go across it. So you could do things like epoxies. We just lost that smeary colour. Fantastic. So you could polish plastics. Plastic sheet, that could be easy. Some of you might do pens. So again, we can use the buffing wheel system there. We can do our pen blank. So I've got two of these. So I'm hoping once I've worked round. A bit of speed, I've got down a bit. So the other nice thing with your speed control on your variable live, as we said earlier, you can set up your heat build up so you're not too high. Even with the wood, if I run this mop too fast, I can actually burn the surface. So one, two. Now I'm hoping the one we've done with the stick, a little bit shinier. Okay. But it'll buff them up really nicely. Okay. Easier to do, I think, sometimes than maybe using something as a burnishing type cream. You've got it wet, you've got to put it on there. Okay, can be, take a long time to do. See, your plastics are quite an adaptable thing. All right, we've got another plastic we've done there. Right, okay, so we said about plastics. Now, that's the same what we've used to do the timber. All right, going to move it over. Some of you will have bits of metal. Cohen's got his arm up again now. Uh oh, I'm just getting into it. Okay, so you've got one plastic. So I'm glad I've got my sheet written. <laughs> Sorry. Up. Tell me to follow. Uh, hi, everyone. No, we just had a, um, a couple of queries. How are these offered? Are they offered individually or as a set? Or You can buy as you like. So obviously you can buy the hub. You've got to buy the hub that's got the right thread, thread to fit your life. You can buy individual stubs or hubs or adapters that I'm holding on to. And then you buy whatever you want, mops, anything else to go on. But the beautiful thing, like I say, everything is quick and easy to change about, okay? You can buy these as a set of three, which is the metal hub everything fits onto. You could have your mops you might already have. You can build up a whole collection of different things, all right? Metal. All right. Let's start with this. Um, what have we got? A brass hinge. Um, I have a furniture making background. So before I came here to polish a hinge, Japanese water stand. And I'll give you the scenario actually with the guy I work with. We'd buy them and we'd get some and they'd turn up shiny. And then the next ones would turn up all dull. Right? So you get a polished one and a dull one. And you've got to polish them up. So now 
All right, so I used to use a Japanese water stain. Now, I can get away with using the Weber X wheel. I could go with the green on here, which is finer. That will take off any lacquer that they put on to stop it doing anything funny in transit. Okay. Going to change it. Going to change it now just to a loose mop. And Fiona's got a hand up. I'll, have to, I'll finish this, look, all right? So then we're going to go with some brown compound. Now, I'll get you, Fiona. Just put it down a minute. Right, on the brown compound, this is exactly the same as we've got, and we polish the wood with. But I'm using a different burr because I don't want to put the black residue that we're going to get off this mop onto that burr, okay? I see it'll go black. All right, so polishing steel on a mop will make this go black. Or polishing brass, shall we say, okay? Now, the other nice thing we're doing it like this, I can even polish the screws at the same time. I've lined my six screws up in a direction. Let's turn that round to get into there. I could even do the other thing at this stage. I could actually put it in reverse. I can come over the top. But you guys don't see as much. All right? But I can vary where I work, just going forward and back. So the reason for the grub screws locking it onto the, the main body of this light spindle is that forward and reverse. And look at that. Now, if you've ever polished brass hinges on a Japanese water stain, that's about an hour to get to that. Isn't that lovely? Okay, nice and shiny, quick and easy. All right, right sorry, Fiona, now, sorry. Right, so Robert's asking that he's got three polishing mops that they all get a bit clogged up. Can you clean some of the compound off them? Right, what's he using them for? And logically, yes, easy enough. So if we get, let's go back to our brown look. Quick and easy to change, wouldn't it? So the normal scenario of this, I put too much on here and I stand here and Colin will sat here and he's probably laughing now because I know the fact that we let the students loop with this. They stand there, half a bar of compound vanished. They then, go and put it onto a light piece of wood. How about a bit of ash that we did the square, look. And I do this. Look at the colour it gives it. it. Gives it a slightly tiny colour. You get all this residue. Too much. So if you're using them for things like wood, all I've got to do is attack it with a corner. Something that's scrapped. So you could easily cut some back. If you find your mops really bunged up, you can go with a wire brush, but you've got to be really careful on approach, okay? But something like a piece of wood would be good just to attack, especially using the corner edges, okay? And easier to control than a wire brush, all right? So, but you can see how I've cut that back now. We haven't got as much compound. We've got quite a bit on the corners here. Oh, uh, all right. So I'll put that down. I'll get my hinge back. I want to blind you, yeah, Fiona? Yep, so we now have one. Can you use this system to stop carving knives and chisels? Right. <laughs> right, we're going to. We're going to do it, right? That's part of it, right? So we don't have a metal bit. Okay, now let's go back to our metal. What I use at the moment to make some stands to support my bowls. Some aluminium or copper rod. Now, this is actually recycled off an aerial, right? Um... Let's go reverse, all right? So, gonna go with the red wheel we got on. I can take the speed up, it'll pull it together a bit more. I'm trying to clean up a section, all right? So this was recycled off a house aerial. It saved me buying some aluminium tube at the time. And I'm trying to figure out a good way of cleaning it to get rid of some of the residue. I still wanted it looking a little bit distressed, so pitted, but not all up, haha, ha. it's hot down there. No, a bit there. This is the bit we've just cleaned up a bit. Well, that's gone the red wheel, which is a coarser Webrax wheel. We go to the green one, we can do the same. Not as aggressive, it'll give me a better finish. Now, you can see the joy of this. I can come over the top of the lathe. I think just get a camera too, I think, nicer there. Look. I can move that back and forwards. That's easier for me to control to try and get in underneath it. So that's really adaptable by running the lathe in reverse as well. So that's a really important part that we've got that lathe running backwards. We can get to there. I think we'll have a look on camera free, look. 
Right, so you can see I can move that back and forwards, blend that in. You can also do the same if you want copper. All right, we'll get to the bit of copper in a minute. So how about we buff them? So we go from there, I can polish this up. So you've seen how quick that is to change. That's there. So this has got that brown compound on. If I really wanted, I could have a new mop and have some pink. And it would give you an amazing high polish. Now just moving the rod back and forwards in line with the wheel. Now if you can see, we're getting shiny. Okay. So you can polish it up. I did a bit of copper yesterday, just playing around. Look at the end of this. So anyone that works as a plumber, you get those copper pipes, you've got to go out and silver solder on site. You need a lathe and stuff now. All right, in your tool bag, a little lathe and a polishing wheel would be fantastic. Exactly the same, you can polish this up, get it nice and clean. You might want to make yourself some furrows, okay? So quick and easy one to do, a bit of metal. All right, now up to there, I could polish the brush for the thing. I've got one other thing to do. Look, we haven't looked at that. Rusty, I've got old chisel. Again, we're running in reverse, so it's pulling away from me. It's easier to drop it on the top here than coming underneath. All I'm really doing is kind of cleaning up the surface rust on this little carving tool. All right, let's do the ferrule so it looks nice. That was quick, wouldn't it? Quick first and just quite effective. We've got a bit more work I can spend on it, but you've seen how quick I've done that bit. Right, that didn't really take any time at all. Change that one. Now, Fiona, you said, could we do carving tools, ship knives and all that stuff? Um, just bending down, get a couple of things. Got this in here, look. Number two, I think, for a minute, will be nice. Um, got a bowl we use. Yeah, but we can actually do a thing now. I've got the carving tool. Um, my pet hate of sharpening anything is sharpening carving tools. I can do it. But they're difficult to do. Most of us struggle to sharpen a carving tool nicely so it'll work. This is pretty much, I think, we can have a look there. This is flexi cut, but it's pretty much straight at the packet. We might have done a little bit. It needs, if you hold where you are, let's see what I can do here. It will cut, but it's taken a bit of effort for me to push. I'll get a shaving. All right, we're getting there. Now, I hate sharpening carving tools and especially V tools. So, what can we do with this? Number of little things. First of all, we can have a rubberized diamond wheel, all right? So this is a rubber wheel, has diamond dust in it, okay? We can clip it on. Now, important bit, okay, and I think we'll go back to main camera. That's a rubber wheel, it's four inch diameter. I did not say CBN or white diamond, or all right? It is just a rubber wheel. You cannot go putting bench grinder wheels on this, they're too heavy, all right? So that's important. So, okay, back to this bit then. So we're running in reverse. I can alter my speed with 1500. The rubber wheel, I can come on the top. I can move the carving tool about. Now this is grinding it. I'm also pulling it back and forward. Now I expect if we have a look on camera two, between the two of those two shots, you can see my hand comes up and down, just gently, I can support it. I could even, if I really want, bring the tool rest in. But that's nice and approachable wheel wheel. We haven't got loads and loads of speed. Let's see what's going on. So the rubber wheel, yeah, we can do that. We've got that done. So you might want to do a heavy grind on those. You've then got a couple of options. This is felt wheel. Green honing soap. Now the green honing soap is a Veritas honing soap we sell. This is designed for sharpening or polishing carving tools. All right, that sort of thing. Fiona. So just to clarify for uh, Dances with Aardvarks, that was grit impregnated it's rubber. A diamond wheel. We, it should be listed in amongst the text I've put on with this. It's, uh, if you looked at the twist and fix stuff, it will come up as an accessory for it. But basically it's a diamond wheel, which is rubberized, right? It's really weird as a thing. 
So I would say it's flexible, flexible. What I'm getting at, it is definitely not just a normal grinding wheel. All right. Um, I don't know if you can really see it. Right? It's a burgundy color. Let's have a look on frail. All right. Now, we sell these as a rubberized type wheel. The carvers really love them because they're quite fine. When you're sharpening carving tools, you don't really need anything massively aggressive. This will give me the scope. I can soften the back corner in just pulling it up and down. You can see where we've used it. We've got that black, right? But as it goes up, I can actually change the angle. Not, not massively aggressive, but does a really nice job with these, okay? Um, the whole idea and reality behind what you're looking at now with the carving tools, we used to sell a cruising grinder 15, 20 years ago that ran in reverse. Well, we use this in reverse, put some soap on. So this is a felt wheel. We can do the edge, and I'm coming away from the cutting edge, so I gently draw my hand up, bring it round. Okay. Wonder if we're getting sharper. Feels a bit better. Now the joy with this is, if you think about it, uh, come back to there now, let's have a look. A bit better. Got to come across, come across the grain nicely now. Trying to control it. Let's bend it back up. And come down through there. Up, leaning across the lathe a little bit, but what I'm getting at with this is a setup. Getting a little bit blunt again. I can go straight back into here. Let's do inside of the V. All right, now, a couple of the guys that we've worked with over the years. Never liked a felt wheel. He'd have stitch wheel. So you've got options here, but again, what I'm getting over now is how quick I can change that. Let me speed up a little bit. Get inside. Right. And I'm bringing it on low as I come on, gently raise the hand a little bit. Back to my bowl. Let's see if that's better. Oh, look at that now. That's good. Okay. Come all the way out. All right, Fiona. Callum would like to know what wheel you would recommend for sharpening woodcut proform cutters. Woodcut proform cutters. That will be shaped there to the cut. So we can get away. With, I would go with. Oh, okay, Cole is putting it. You're in about then. Then. Okay. Well done, mate. I think. All right. These things, we oh, personally, you could polish it, okay? Um, come on, I don't know if you've got, it's not on here, is it? I can move it, actually. I've got enough, that's right. I've just moved the, so the woodcut cutters on these, these have got a top which I can move over. I can just swing it a little bit. It's a little bit loose and on that. Now, on here, we could, actually, if I can get in, so I'm polishing up towards the cutting edge. So this is running in reverse. So I can use that stitch wheel. All right, so the tube of this by running the lathe forward in reverse. I'm running away from what I'm sharpening now. That looks nice and shiny now. All right, so we polish that outside face coming up to this cutting edge right at the top. So that will be good there. So something like the stitch wheel would be fantastic for that. Let's just put that one back in place and make sure them pull up. Yeah. So following on from that, would you be able to sharpen carbide cutters with this, the round and the square? Sharpen, sorry. The carbide cutters. No. All right. You want to sharpen a carbide cutter. The best way if you can do these, as long as they are flat on the top, is diamond hone across the top with... In reality, just a diamond card, okay? Everything, so the carbide is too hard for that rubber wheel. As much as it's coming away from it, it will probably mark the rubber wheel more than actually sharpen the tool, which the carbides are harder than my tail, so it's going to affect that a little bit more, all right? So ideally, just that diamond at home, do it by hand, flat across the top if you can, all right? If you've got a way of maybe taking them off, you could buff the outside edges, but it's going to be tricky again you're more likely to round it as well, okay? So stick away from those a little bit. Now, Fiona, you asked one other one earlier. So you've seen what we can do with the gouge. We can sharpen it, we touch that up. 
I believe so it was something like you know now let's do this before we do that this is what that foam type board you get for display stuff now I'm actually having to put a bit of pressure with my thumb and I'm struggling to cut that down for there all right I've really got to push now what happens then if we do a little bit of compound we're on the top so your flexi cut can the now this is the other major thing we said about and when we first looked at this an idea could it mount in the chuck jaws there's still a scope we might do one that mounts in the chuck jaws but i was one of the people that went that all gets in the way so if you can imagine you've got that big lump of metal set in there it's restricting where i can get into with the tool so by having the narrower hub directly on the road and screwing it on and off as you need, I've got access that I can do both sides of that knife really easily. Nothing getting in the way, blocking my hands. Everything's nice and round on here. I do both sides of our knife. And all I'm doing at this stage now, I've not used that diamond wheel. That's just polishing that up. That's easier. Oh, taking a big cut now. More controllable. All right. Did one for Ben yesterday and he went, wow. Okay. So we can get that to cut. So something like your little chip knives, fantastic. You can stand here running reverse. Some of you, and I thought we might get, this is the question. What happens if my lathe doesn't run in reverse? Apart from your switch aspect, you could, can you walk around the other side? So you could go from here to run the correct way. You can dress on the top, but you've got to be able to turn it on and off safely. Okay. But to do carving tools, so much easier to come here with it running away from you. Easier to control. More difficult to get in underneath and see what you're doing and approach it right. Okay. So... I'll put the glasses back on just to go back to work then. I'm sorry. Sorry. But Robert wants to know, he's got the Beal mop system. Yep. Does that fit on this? The Beal mop system will fit straight onto the leg that he's already got. So he will have something as a, okay. The mops he's got, yes, he would be able to put on the others if he wanted to change for this. So the mops he's already got will fit on, yes. And he can bolt those on. That will work. Uh -huh. And it, it would allow you to quickly change them. The bill mop system, I'm trying to think now, Carl, and you've got, you have to remember, I think the bill mop system, they bolt on to, yeah. so you've got to undo the bolt each time you want to change them, whatever else. So I can understand, yes, the aspect of, that's so much easier. I love the aspect that, oh, that's so good. That spring-loaded system clips in, I can run forward and reverse without any problems. So we had that question right at the beginning, Fanny. I've got the little set of carving tools that got sharpened. But you threw that question at the beginning of what's the advantage of this over a pigtail? That, so much quicker. But I can actually run forward and reverse. So things like the carving tools, there is no way I can sharpen the carving tool using what we've used before with the pigtail. It's going to come off. The mop will unwind. The other nice thing, which if you think about when we use the pigtail, we tend to bring the tail stock off. We've got to really make sure you push it into that Morse taper because it's only held by friction. This is directly screwed on, so it's a more positive grip and everything else. When I first looked at it, we were quite shocked on, can we get the accuracy we need to get this when this is on to run nice and true? Wow. Really beautiful done. There's no wobble on there. Okay. So... All right, okay, all right. We're presuming a lot here. Um, what's a pigtail? It's on the end of the... the, the no, sorry. Um, they renamed it, didn't they? So you get a polishing mop harbour. Okay. Now, Colwyn sat there near the mic. Um, when we both started, we used to use a polishing mop arbor that fitted onto a bench grinder that was six inches long. I had straight bore on here and we used to hold it in the middle of the sea jaws on the chuck. 
when they used to come out with the mop adapter or holding onto it as well, when it used to come out and go around the room, it was just a little bit scary. So actually, this is a little easier to put into your Morse taper as long as it grips and is supported on the Morse taper. The mops I've got won't screw on because we've got things up, but you could screw it on. But this is basically a screw thread that gets bigger coming up. Okay. This bolts on, clamps on, clips in, in clips off. How much quicker and easier do you want it? I mean, and so much safer in my fix. It is directly on there. The other thing, like I say, is the fact that we can do these. So little curving tools. I can polish these right up. Just going to work through these. Little V one. So fiddly little tools like this. And I mean, these are Japanese carving tools. Great tools still, but with them being quite small, difficult to do by hand, take the bow off the inside. Now all I'm using now is that stitch mop. Running reverse. I can come on low here and polish the back. Punch it. I'll get my arm over. Parallel. Just sharpen these all up. So quick and easy to sharpen a set of carving tools like that. And like I say, if you're working directly on your lathe, half my moving about, how much easier do you want it? You don't even have to go away, come straight back onto your carving bit. All right, so we can work between the two. You could have that on there. Isn't that lovely? Wow. Want to resharpen? Give it a quick touch up. So fantastic for that. Okay, right. Let's just swap this one. We've done our wood, we got shiny. I've lost a mop. And it's down there, look. Oh. Last thing we can do, let's run forward. Now this is going back to the loose mop. A little bit of carnauba wax. Carnauba's non-toxic, food safe. You can even polish your nails on this, okay? Fiona's sat here now, so we're, me and Colin have uh, just opened a nail studio in Axminster downtown. Um, so if you'd like to come and join us for that, that, that would be, um, I mean, I get told off my nails. Look at this funny brown colour now. Okay. So, if you guys got any more questions? Sorry, I'm sorry about my sense of humour. It, it was a long weekend, right? Fiona's got another question now. Right? Can you do your toenails? Sorry? Can you do your toenails? What? Sorry? But, but this one's not very good. I've had complaints about my hands on the on screen. I, I mean, probably clean that up. Let's hang on. All right. I get a bit shinier, okay? So you can polish your nails lightly. I wouldn't recommend doing too much, but it's a way off. But the major thing with this, if you want, how quick everything can just change around. And that aspect of running this in reverse owns up a whole new different thing. The carving tool thing, wow. For me, carving tools at home, um, almost struggle to do. Used to do them by hand, something like a water stone, an oil stone, try and polish them up. This will give me the scope of just buff them quite quick and easily, get them up to that, that sharp stage. Just a different mop. The joy is, you know, everything. So we can go from wood polishing, Polish your metal, your curving tools, clean up a bit of alloy pipe, one little system, you can build whatever you want to do with it. There are going to be certain people out there that I know that are going to go, I could use that just for carving tools. Yeah. If you do any carving, you want a quick and easy way, stitch them up, green honing soap, buff them, you can get them to have a better shine than I've got my fingernails. All right? But you will get a real polished edge on there but you've got to work away from that sharp edge when it's working. So with these, definitely got to run in reverse, work on the top. It's more controllable. You can see what you're doing. And that's really where the idea of this with the variable speed in the forward and reverse, so important. All right. So hopefully giving you a bit of an insight. Fiona and Colin are just scanning these questions now, just making sure I've covered most of. Bit of a weird session. All right. I am... Um, most of you know, who know me will tell you I'm, I'm enthusiastic about stuff that I like playing with. I love the idea of this, of how quick I can just move things about. Um, I get quite involved with certain things here where can we design something? What's your idea? Or can we do... You're getting the ideas now, okay? You guys all right? Nothing else? Right then. So we will be back on Thursday. 
Ben's got a, a little carving project using these chisels. So I've just sharpened them for him. They're all ready to go for you. All right, so he's got that on Thursday. Beautiful little carving thing that he's done. All right, so that'll be then. Can't remember what you've got next week, Colin. Can you remember? No, next week's next week. Uh, a few of the guys that I know in the States, I will be over for the AW in two weeks' time just to give you a warning. So we will look forward to seeing you for that one. Okay. So if you want to see me, I will be in Kentucky in Louisville. You can come join me for the AW. I'd love to meet you. Okay. That's the end of today's Woodworking Wisdom. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you all very much. All right. Bye then.